Hello, and welcome to this movie. This animation, which will start more materially, illustrates the behavior of a mathematical model. The purpose of the model is to investigate adaption of bacteria to an antibiotic resistance plasmid. Specifically, the model considers E. coli and the plasmid PBR322, which carries the tetracycline efflux pump TET. The adaption considered is due to a mutation in the host potassium uptake system TRAC. The movie shows a model bacteria cell and its intracellular workings on the left side. Each box corresponds to one component or state variable. For example, A2 is glucose and M5 is glycogen mass. Of particular importance in this case are the various potassium transport systems on the membrane, including the KDP cup and track uptake systems, the CAF excretion system, and the tetracycline efflux pump TET, which also takes up potassium. The model simulates individual cells as agents, and the population of cells is shown on the right side. The cells are growing in a periodically diluted batch culture. There are four dilutions as illustrated by the timeline on the top. Each growth period corresponds to a different strain. The first period shows the wild type without the plasmid. The second period shows the wild type with the plasmid. The third period shows the track mutant with the plasmid and the fourth period shows the track mutant without the plasmid. As the animation starts, you can see that the model is quite dynamic, as is evident by the changing sizes of the boxes. Each box in the cell corresponds to one state variable. Basic host metabolism components are green and potassium components are blue. One feature that is evident in most state variables is the doubling during the cell cycle. An abrupt drop in all state variables indicates a division event. An important behavior of the model is a relatively high uptake of potassium by track and corresponding high efflux by KEF. This is illustrated by the red arrows. As the nutrient glucose, the box with the symbol A2, is depleted, the growth rate decreases and eventually stops. The second period starts again with a high nutrient concentration and growth rate. This strain has now acquired the antibiotic resistance plasmid. The plasmid components are red and they include DNA, RNA and proteins. You can see that the tetracycline efflux pump TET takes up potassium. However, the uptake rate is much less than that of the track system and the added efflux by KEF is small. As in the plasmid-free cell, there is significant influx and efflux of potassium. All potassium pumps, including TRAC, KEF, and TET, are powered by the proton motive force, and they consume energy. The third period follows another dilution and replenishment of nutrients. The cell now has a mutation in the TRAC system, which is shown in dark blue color. This mutation significantly reduces the influx of potassium by TRAC and associated efflux by KEF. This reduction in influx and efflux and corresponding reduction in energy consumption increases the growth rate of the mutant. This increase is slight and not clearly visible in the animation. However, when the mutant and wild type strains are competing, this small difference in growth rate results in a significant ecological fitness advantage and it drives the evolution of the track mutation. At the start of the fourth period, the cell loses the plasmid. However, several plasmid components remain in the cell until they are diluted down by subsequent divisions. The reduced uptake of the track mutant and no uptake by TET to compensate for this results in a lower potassium influx and corresponding potassium limitation. The track mutant cell is dependent on TET and the plasmid to take up sufficient potassium. This concludes the movie. Thank you for watching it. For more information, please visit my website at www.systemsbioecology.org. Goodbye.